Namaste, uh, bonjour. Uh, my name is Ruchira Gupta. My I'm the founder of Apne Aap uh, Women I'm Worldwide, an anti-sex trafficking organization which has organized more than 20,000 girls, women, and their family members to fight against sex trafficking and the prostitution system. I'm really pleased to be here today because what we have found in our work in India and also globally in Nepal, Bangladesh, across our borders, is that those who are trafficked and those who are prostituted are the last. And when I use the term the last, I mean someone who is absolutely at the bottom of society, the most destituted. And we often use the term the last girl for that person. The last girl is someone who is poor, who is female, in India, she is low caste and she's a teenager. Very often, traffickers take advantage of her absence of choices. We see that because she is cut off from housing, from education, from jobs, uh, from even legal protection and access to justice, uh, traffickers can come and take advantage and buy and sell her. Also, clients or johns, as they are known across the world, can take advantage of that last girl because she is invisible in the eyes of society. And often, she is also considered, her sexual availability is normalized. She's considered potentially available for sexual exploitation as if that is her destiny or that is her fate or that is something which is just one among her many livelihood options. So through our work in Apnea Women Worldwide in India, we are trying to challenge the notion of what is acceptable for the last is not true, that she should not be sexually available. She has the same rights as every other citizen of India to access justice, to not be discriminated against, to be able to access all the things which any woman in a free and democratic country can access. Uh, today's panel is also about discussing why the last are the most prostituted and form the majority of those who are in the brothels and in prostitution systems across the country. Today I have with me uh, Michelle uh, Odette. Uh, she is the chair of the Native Women's Association of Canada. And she will talk about why it is the Native women of Canada who are the majority of those who are trafficked, or at least they are suffering at the very minimum huge amounts of sexual violence, which is considered inevitable, normal, and ignored and neglected. Um, I also have with me Fatima Khatun, who's from Apnea Women Worldwide in India. She is from a community called the Nut Community. They were formerly nomadic groups uh, and labeled during our British colonialism as a criminal tribe. Since then, they were so marginalized uh, that they were forced to settle on the edges of villages in caste ghettos, not given jobs, branded as thieves, and cut off from any kind of system of justice or education over the years. And finally, many of their men were groomed into pimping from father to son, and women and girls groomed into prostitution from mother to daughter. And even today, when we try to start schools in their uh, caste communities, in their ghettos, uh, the district authorities and local authorities, government authorities, often tell us that but this is the destiny of these girls, these women, and nothing can be done about it. So most often, they don't get access to schools. Principals do not want to admit children from such caste communities. If they go to a police station, nobody wants to write police complaints filed by such women and girls. Um, if they try to get jobs, they are told they are thieves, they are not given jobs, and so on. Even government documents evade them all the time and uh, struggle even to get a passport or a voter ID card, a birth certificate, uh, subsidies for food, low-cost food and housing evades them. And they are the first that the traffickers in our country prey upon. Fatima was trafficked at age nine uh, to uh, a man uh, who was running a brothel in one such caste community. She tried to run away three times, and she also tried to help other girls who were being kept by a husband who was 
20 years older than her to run away. She was not able to run away. Uh, she had to have six children inside that uh, red light area. She was ostensibly trafficked into marriage, but then used and abused. And uh, later, um, she became a leader when Apne Aap started its first community center. And today she helps us rescue girl after girl in her caste community, will not move out of the red light area there, saying that she will only know what's going on when she stays there. Her daughter was picked up by a police officer, 14 year old, when she, by a corrupt police officer when she exposed a trafficking ring in her area. So uh, Fatima is a courageous leader, and now she's become a role model for many such girls and women inside India all over. Um, Anna, who's going to be joining us shortly, Anna Zubina, she's the chair of the European uh, uh, Network of Migrant Women. She's from Cyprus. Uh, she's on her way to our panel, and uh, she is um, going to talk about how uh, the majority of those trafficked are uh, in Europe uh, represent women of color. There's a race dimension uh, also that many of them are undocumented. They are migrant workers, don't have networks. And how, again, justice evades them and political systems fail to respond to them. Um, and finally, uh, of course, I have Pierrette Pape, uh, who is from the European Women's Lobby. Uh, all of you know her already as a... Um, tenacious campaigner uh, against the prostitution system, campaigning to change laws uh, for uh, addressing the demand. And why that is necessary? Because uh, we have to stand by the last. And um, I would like to open the panel up uh, by just mentioning that uh, in India, we were inspired uh, by uh, Gandhi, uh, M.K. Gandhi, or Mahatma Gandhi, as he's known, that uh, when any change has to happen, we have to shut our eyes and think how we can help the last person we know, the poorest person, the weakest person we know, to regain control of their destiny. And only then will that change be meaningful. And in this context, we know that the last is that last girl. And she's co-relational in Canada. She is poor female teenager and a Native American. In Europe, she is a migrant worker. In India, she is a low caste person, female. And so it is similar experiences and similar lack of political responses that we want to highlight through our panel today, through the voices of the very survivors who are challenging these systems. Uh, so I would like to start with uh, Michelle, and uh, Michelle, uh, would you like to talk about why uh, do you want? Why did the Native uh, Women's Network in Canada even take on prostitution as an issue? Okay. Merci beaucoup. Alors. Merci beaucoup pour uh, cette introduction. Et tout d'abord, je vais commencer par vous dire que ce n'est pas un homme de la vie, il y a un peu de la vie, il y a un peu de la vie, il y a un peu de la vie. En français, en français, distinguez invités. C'est avec beaucoup d'émotion, je vous dirais, et euh, de la bonne émotion quand même, et euh, de fierté que je me retrouve ici dans un autre territoire, qui n'est plus le Canada, mais la France. Et euh, dans, avant de commencer, je tiens à remercier les organisateurs et organisatrices d'avoir pensé à Femmes autochtones du Canada pour venir vous partager en quelques minutes nos préoccupations nos passions, And mais aussi peut-être so certaines solutions ou avenues à prendre pour la question là, des femmes autochtones um, sur euh, le territoire du Canada. Of, uh, Certains disent, Canada. même chez nous, au Canada, Even au Québec country, et dans les Canada communautés autochtones, in Certains in disent que c'est le plus vieux métier du monde. Alors, pourquoi s'en faire? So Certaines vont nous dire, it? écoutez, Madame Odette, say, ceci est mon corps, ceci est mon choix, This is mon my droit. case, this is my right, une this is my choice. Mais plus tard. And I have an answer for this. But uh, Femme it will come later. du Canada existe Native depuis 1974. Et sa raison d'être dans les tout débuts était de dénoncer la discrimination à l'égard des femmes qui découlait d'une loi, la loi sur les Indiens. Une loi qui a malheureusement servi pour construire ou bâtir les objectifs de l'apartheid um, en Afrique. Alors, ça vous en C'est aussi une loi qui fait qu'aujourd'hui, en tant que maire de Saint-Enfant et mes collègues ici, issus des Premières Nations de différentes régions au Québec et Canada, 
sommes reconnus comme des mineurs, oui, donc 17 ans et moins, women. même si nous avons 40 ans et plus. Oh, women. Uh, Pas très longtemps de ça, une douzaine d'années, le Canada était reconnu comme le meilleur pays au monde, avec l'indice de développement humain. 14 ans plus tard, nous tombons au 12e rang sur la question des droits des femmes, avec les mêmes indices de développement humain, près du 18e rang. Question autochtone, toujours avec les mêmes critères, 76e. And when it comes to the Juste dans les communautés autochtones et en suivant les critères, évidemment. Pourquoi? Depuis toujours, violence institutionnelle, violence systémique, raciale, discriminatoire et ainsi de suite, au point où on a dû relever nos manches en tant que groupe de femmes et malheureusement réaliser en 2001 que non seulement ces discriminations-là pouvaient découler d'un système de politique et de programme, mais nous pouvions remarquer sur le terrain une forte disparition, une grande disparition de nos sœurs, nos filles, nos mères. Our, our Pas de nouvelles. Daughters, on les retrouve moms, plus. Certaines d'entre elles, nous les retrouvons et on décide de faire une recherche à partir um, de 2000. That, Amnesty International nous a donné un bon coup de pouce. 2014, nous représentons seulement 4 de la population canadienne. In 2014, groupe de femmes, évidemment, la population féminine. Et plus de 16 d'entre nous manquent à la peine ou été tués. Alors aujourd'hui, les chiffres peuvent varier entre 1 200 à 3 000 femmes depuis les 20 dernières années. Beaucoup de gens vont dire que ce sont des femmes qui se sont retrouvées dans la prostitution. Je vous dirais que pas nécessairement mais peut-être dans le trafic humain. Dans l'industrie du sexe, le trafic humain, euh, c'est quelque chose, un phénomène émergent dans nos communautés. Récemment, il y a quelques semaines, la Fondation, vous avez accès sur Internet, la Fondation canadienne des femmes soumettant un rapport sur le trafic humain avec une portion Femmes autochtones du Canada. Des chiffres alarmants. Des jeunes femmes nous disaient, dans nos recherches et nos approches, l'approche qualitative et quantitative, qu'elles ont été prises dans le trafic humain à partir de l'âge de 7 ans jusqu'à 12 ans. Un matin se réveille dans le fond d'une cale de bateau, ne comprend plus rien. À l'âge de 12 ans, déjà accro aux drogues parce qu'on lui forçait et d'un bateau à l'autre pendant plusieurs années comme ça. Des histoires comme ça au Canada existent, où elles rencontraient d'autres femmes de d'autres pays dans le fond des cales de bateau. Phénomène que moi, je ne connaissais pas avant d'arriver à Femmes autochtones du Canada. La plupart des femmes que nous avons interviewées pour cette recherche-là nous disaient et nous continuent de nous dire que ce n'était pas un choix. Ça a été quelque chose d'imposé. Et 96 de ces femmes et jeunes filles ont été malheureusement agressées sexuellement avant d'arriver dans, dans, dans le trafic humain, dans la prostitution, donc dans leur milieu, dans leur communauté. Et une fois prises dans la prostitution, 90 d'entre elles ont été violées par leur pimp, leur john. 90 Il y a une loi qui arrive, et ça, je crois que mes collègues vont en parler plus tard, une loi au Canada, le, le projet de loi C-36, où on va criminaliser l'industrie. Et même les femmes ont prises dans la prostitution. C'est l'aspect où les femmes autochtones du Canada dénoncent et très préoccupées parce qu'on ne veut pas encore criminaliser celles qui n'ont pas fait ce choix. Nous demandons, par contre, des mesures de prévention des But mesures qui vont soutenir ces femmes pour sortir de la prostitution et faire en sorte aussi que nos enfants ne se retrouvent pas, sure euh, étant donné que nous sommes des groupes vulnérables. Alors, nous voulons offrir de meilleures groups. options. Exemple, dans les débats que nous avons eus avant de prendre des positions officielles, des jeunes femmes nous disaient, « Michel, c'est mon droit. C'est le travail du sexe, ça m'appartient. » Et je me disais, « Mais maintenant, je suis capable de dire haut et fort, je ne voudrais pas qu'une de mes jumelles ouvre le journal et me dise, « Maman, il euh, y a une formation qui s'offre au collège à Montréal sur euh, comment travailler dans la prostitution. Je ne voudrais pas. Alors, nous demandons aux parlementaires au Canada de s'assurer que cette loi-là va, va aussi répondre aux groupes vulnérables, notamment les femmes autochtones, dans les communautés isolées et celles qui sont dans les centres urbains. Il y a tout un développement nordique. Il y a à peine une semaine, j'étais avec votre président de la France, M. Hollande. 
J'ai eu le privilège d'avoir 30 minutes assise à écouter une discussion avec le Premier ministre du territoire du Nord-Ouest. Et ensuite, lui et moi, peut-être 15 secondes. Mais ce 15 secondes va se continuer demain avec les gens du ministère des Relations intergouvernementales et internationales d'Amérique du Nord et des Caraïbes pour leur dire oui, le développement du Nord est extrêmement important pour la population québécoise et les peuples autochtones. Cependant, depuis l'avènement du Plan Nord, nous remarquons que la procession chez les Autochtones augmente, et ce, sans nécessairement leur consentement. Alors demain, évidemment, il sera question de faire attention au niveau du trafic humain. Et s'il y a des relations qui se font avec le Québec, des ententes de libre-échange, et ainsi de suite, faisons attention au niveau du trafic. Je ne dis pas que vous allez venir nous trafiquer, ce n'est pas ça. Je vais le dire à chaque pays et notamment le nôtre, de faire attention. On a été malheureusement approchés pour nous dire qu'il y a eu des viols sur les chantiers au niveau du Nord. On parle forestier, uh, minier, écotourisme, etc. Ces jeunes femmes-là, uh, la plupart d'entre elles, pour terminer, je vous dirais, lorsqu'on me dit que c'est le plus vieux métier du monde, et lorsqu'on me dit ceci est mon choix, ceci est mon corps, et ceci est mon droit, je réponds sincèrement, en tant que mère, en tant que militante, As a fighter, à mes yeux et à mon cœur, la in prostitution est la violence is the worst physique, form of mentale, spirituelle et émotionnelle qu'une femme ou une fille puisse subir. Alors je dis à mon gouvernement, so au gouvernement my canadien the Canadian et aux provinces, nous ne devons pas tolérer la prostitution. Un homme a été congédié récemment, un joueur de football de la Ligue nationale. Le football de cette formule au Canada, euh, aux États-Unis, parce qu'il avait été pris par euh, la vidéo de l'ascenseur en train de battre sa femme, sa conjointe. Alors on le tasse quelques jours et se sent salaire. Et il y a une pression sociale, mouvement de femmes, les groupes, des abolitionnistes. Toutes sortes de groupes qui, qui se mobilisent was, um, et disent ce geste a été inacceptable. Deux semaines après, la Ligue nationale de football a congédié cette vedette. Alors, plus on met des lois, this pressure, plus on dérange, tant mieux. League, Mais en bout du compte, um, un résultat intéressant ici, c'est que c'est tolérance zéro. Et ce, que tu sois une vedette player. ou un gars so qui travaille dans une garage, peu importe ton statut social, Tolérance ou même titre que la prostitution et toutes les sexes no qui tournent autour. Alors, pour moi, je vous dirais que c'est de l'iniquité et c'est clair que c'est toujours les hommes qui en profitent le plus. Mais nous avons mis des hommes me, au monde, j'en ai trois garçons, moi, parmi who, les cinq, um, et je leur dis aujourd'hui, il y a une autre façon d'aimer, une autre façon de faire les choses, et cette année, dans nos écoles, dans nos familles, de dire, us, ne sois pas le prochain. Merci homes, beaucoup. Thank you for your powerful testimony and for raising the question about how we can bring up our sons differently and how can we make a justice system more accountable by building solidarity and even entering trafficking into trade agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, these are huge organizing issues that you have raised and uh, strategies for us to think about. Now I would like to ask Fatima Khatoun uh, to speak and uh, Fatima will talk about how prostitution is a particular form of violence against women who belong to certain castes who are poor and uh, disenfranchised. Um, Fatima. I will translate for her. I will translate for you. 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 I will translate for नमस्ते मेरा नाम फातिमा खातून है और मैं फॉरविसगंज बिहार से आई हुई हूँ नमस्ते माय नेम इज़ फातिमा खातून एंड आई कम फ्रॉम फॉरविसगंज बिहार और मैं नट जाति से हूँ नट जाति की बेटी भी हूँ और बहू भी हूँ आई एम फ्रॉम द नट कम्युनिटी आई एम बोथ अ डॉटर ऑफ द नट कम्युनिटी एंड अ डॉटर इन लॉ ऑफ द नट कम्युनिटी मैं आप सबको बताना चाहती हूँ कि नट जाति की बेटी और बहू या फिर माएँ जो नट जाति में पैदा होती है 
उनके ऊपर कैसे कैसे हिंसा होती है क्योंकि वो जो औरतें हैं उन्हें समाज और कानून और हमारी सरकार जो है वो ये मानता है कि वो पैदा होती है बिकने के लिए I want to tell you uh, how a woman or a girl from the nut community is exploited because our society our legal system our government all believe that a daughter of is born into the nut community to be sold na to sarkar uske liye koi kanun banaya hua hai na samaj uski hinsa ko dekhta hai balki un pe hinsa karta hai par uske aansu nahi dekhta पुलिस जो है उनको इंसाफ नहीं देता द गवर्नमेंट इग्नोर्स हर टीयर्स एंड द गवर्नमेंट एंड सोसाइटी बिलीव दैट शी शुड बी अवेलेबल सेक्शुअली फॉर यूज जब हम नट जाति में बेटियां पैदा होता है तो तभी ही मान लेता है कि ये बिकने के लिए पैदा हुआ है और उसे उसी तरह से पाला जाता है अगर उनके अंदर इच्छा भी है कि उनकी शादी कराए उन्हें पढ़ाए लिखाए अच्छे इंसान बनाए पर ये समाज उसको इस तरह जीने नहीं देता है कि ताकि वो अपनी सपने जी सके वेन शी इज़ बॉर्न शी इज़ ग्रूम्ड इन फैक्ट फॉर प्रॉस्टिट्यूशन एंड शी इज़ नॉट इवन अलाउड टू होल्ड ऑन टू अर ड्रीम्स टू गो टू स्कूल और टू डिवेलप सम जॉब स्किल्स टू डू समथिंग एल्स अगर कभी तंग आके कोई पुलिस के सामने चले चले भी जाए कि इंसाफ मांगने के लिए तो पुलिस दोबारा उन्हें वहीं भेज दिया जाता है बल्कि उनके साथ उनकी सारी शोषण भी करता है उनसे पैसे भी लेते हैं और दोबारा उन्हें उसी जगह पे फेंक दिया जाता है वेन अ गर्ल इवन रन अवे समाइम्स एंड गोज टू द पुलिस स्टेशन द पुलिस सेंस अ बैक होम सेंग दैट इज़ योर होम एंड दैट इज़ योर फैमिली Uh, on top of that the police will also sexually exploit her and also try and extort money from her agar jo 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 arte ye kehte hain ki hum apni marzi se karna chahte hain ye deve par hamara parampara hai apni marzi se karna chahte to kya bolega ye nahi bolega to kya bolega kyunki sarkar bhi to unhe wahi usi nazar se dekhta hai and when a woman from such a community says this is what i want to do this is my choice this is the tradition of my community she says that out of frustration because what else can she tell a society which is not listening to her kyunki kyunki wo janta hai ki hame insaaf nahi milega hame ye samaj kabhi apnayega nahi hame izzat aur haq se jeene nahi dega to kya fayda hai in samaj ke samne ja ke rone ka kya fayda hai hame kanoon ke samne ja ke rone ka तो हम कानून के सामने समाज के सामने ये दिखलाते हैं कि हम खुद अपनी मर्जी से करना चाहते हैं एंड द ओनली रीजन दैट सम ऑफ द वुमेन फ्रॉम आर कम्युनिटी से दैट वी आर चूजिंग टू बी इन प्रोस्टिट्यूशन इज बिकॉज वी फील द इज नो पॉइंट इन क्राइंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ अ सोसाइटी विच इज़ नॉट लिसनिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ अ लीगल सिस्टम विच डजन केयर एंड अ पुलिस सिस्टम विच इज़ करप्ट अगर हम बचपन से जो झेलते आए हैं जो देखते आए हैं तो मेरे अंदर तो ये बैठ चुका है ना हमारे अंदर जो हमारी नर जाति की बेटियां हैं उनके अंदर ये बैठ चुका है कि हमें इंसाफ मिलने वाला नहीं है तो फिर हम रो धो के करेंगे क्या और हमारी जो सोचने समझने का ताकत है उनकी जो सोचने समझने का ताकत है वो ख़त्म हो जाती है even what happens is that because we are so exploited from such an early age and we know that there is no recourse to justice our ability to think and to articulate our problems also gets finished very quickly ye kanoon jo hai wo kabhi apni kanoon mein ye lagu nahi karta hai ki jo criminal hai jo shoshan karta hai jo ladkiyon ko khareedta hai hum use arrest kare agar kanoon aisa ban jaye ki jo ladkiyon ko khareedta hai use kari se kari saza denge usse arrest karenge to hum aurte kabhi nahi bikenge and if the law changes and we have very strict punishments uh, for those who buy us and sell us then uh, and the uh, legal uh, the law starts arresting johns and traffickers then uh, none of us women will be sold agar ye samaj ye thaan le ki hum aurte jitni bhi aurte hain sabka adhikar barabar hai hamare jeene ka samman barabar hai hame azadi ki zindagi jeene ka adhikar hai अगर हम पूरा समाज ठान ले ये कि इसको बदलना है तो कभी भी कोई लड़की कहीं भी नहीं बिकेगी और वो सर उठा के जी सकेगी और अपने सपने को साकार कर सकेगी इफ द इफ सोसाइटी डिसाइड्स 
that all women have to be treated equally and therefore then try to change the law to protect all women equally, then we will not be sold and women will stand in solidarity with each other. Why do we have a child in our own age, 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 इन में पैदा होती है बेटी तो ये हम लोग मान लेते हैं कि ये बिगने के लिए पैदा हुई है क्यों हम लोग ये नहीं सोच पाते हैं हमें ये अधिकार दिया नहीं जाता है कि हम अपनी बेटियों को पढ़ा के अच्छे इंसान बनाए उसको डॉक्टर बना सकें इंजीनियर बना सकें या कोई बड़े से बड़े पोस्ट पे उसको देख सकें क्यों नहीं सोच सकते हमें क्यों नहीं सोचने का अधिकार देता है ये समाज हमें Why are our politicians and our lawyers and other people in society not responding to the fact that our daughters also want to be doctors and lawyers and teachers and have big dreams too? Why are those who exploit us not considered ready for punishment? Uh, why is uh, our prostitution considered uh, ready for legalization? Because we are also dreams when our daughter is born, or we are also dreams when our daughter is born, we are also dreams when our daughter is born. है कि हम दुनिया के सामने कदम से कदम मिला के चल सकें उन्हें दिखा सकें कि हम नट की बेटियां सिर्फ बिकने के लिए नहीं बहुत कुछ दुनिया वालों के सामने अपना दिखा सकते हैं कि हमारी भी बहुत सारी जो सपने हैं जो दुनिया के सामने आ सकता है और हम कुछ बन के दिखा सकते हैं we have dreams also and if we get a chance and if laws protect us and hold those who are trafficking us and prostituting us accountable then we can also talk about our dreams and show the world that we can become something kyu hame apni betiyon ko chupana padta hai jab thodi si badi hoti hai to customer ke nazron se chupana padta hai in samaj ki nazron se chupana padta hai unko chupa ke palna padta hai ताकि किसी की बुरी नज़र ना पड़ जाए और इनके साथ कोई बलात्कार ना करे इनको कोई खरीद ना ले क्योंकि अगर नहीं हम लोग बेचना चाहें तो भी ज़बरदस्ती खरीदते हैं Why do we have to hide our daughters uh, in our homes from customers, from society, just as soon as they start getting a little older? Just because we are scared that they will be bought and they will be raped. And why is there no one to protect us or our daughters from this? तो ये साथ क्या हुआ वो भी थोड़ा सा बता दे मेरे मेरा मेरा शादी नौ साल की उम्र में हुआ था और जब नौ साल की उम्र में एक बच्ची की शादी होता है तो पता भी नहीं चलता मेरा तो पता भी नहीं था कि मेरा शादी शादी का मतलब क्या है और शादी क्या होता है काजुल के साथ भी और फिर सा, जब शादी हुआ एक तो घर से हम लड़ाई शुरू किए और जब ये समाज से लड़ना शुरू किए अपनी बहनों अपनी बेटियों को बचाने के लिए तो कानून हमारे साथ जब कानून को पता था कि हम इन औरतों को बचाने के लिए लड़ रहे हैं और कानून कभी नहीं चाहता है कि जो नर जाति की बेटी हो वो बिकना बंद कर दे क्योंकि वो बिकना बंद हो जाएगा तो उसका जेब खाली हो जाएगा और उसने मेरी बेटी को उठाया था आधी रात में मेरी बेटी को उठाया और एक दिन मैं पुलिस लॉकअप में रखा ताकि जो आने वाली वो नर जाति की जो पीढ़ी है वो बदले ना so when she tried to resist uh, the traffickers and she exposed a trafficking ring uh, and went to the police and they gave uh, evidence against a trafficking ring uh, the police official showed up at her house in midnight and picked up her 14 year old daughter and kept her in a police lockup all night just to intimidate her from not being an activist against trafficking and to send a message to her community that nobody should stand up to traffickers and this tradition should continue in her community, in her caste. After that, when Ruchira Didi had a police case, our Mahila Mandal had a hero, she left my daughter. Then she left me, because she had a name from our Nardjati, नाम के हैं जो नट जाति से है वो अपनी बहनें और अपनी बेटियों को बचाने के लिए वो लड़ रहे हैं तो उस पर बार किया उन्हें सात दिन जेल में रखा पुलिस ने उसे अरेस्ट करके then after that uh, you know we filed a police uh, complaint and we went to the national human rights commission so they let her daughter go but then they arrested a colleague of hers and kept him in jail for seven nights to stop uh, to try to stop apne aap from doing the work ab tu kya chahti hai kanoon se main kanoon main kanoon se ye chahti hu ki aurat bikne ke liye paida hui hai to fir agar aurat bikne ke liye paida hui hai to ye sarkar jo hai sara kaam band kar de mardon ko aurat ko contract de de ki sari aurat bikega क्योंकि औरत का कॉन्ट्रैक्ट तो नहीं है ना कि किसी ने साइन किया और उसे खरीद लिया शी वॉन्ट्स द गवर्नमेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वीमेन आर नॉट फॉर सेल एंड शी सेज दैट यू नो वी आर नॉट ऑन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट 
to just be sold again and again. And if the government truly believes that there are some women who are available to be sold, then why don't they just write out a contract to say that all women are to be sold? Because if a woman becomes a business, then what is the right of the woman? Why do we talk about the right of the woman? We talk about the right of the woman. और दूसरी तरफ औरत को बेचने पर मजबूर करते हैं। So if we really talk about women's rights, then on one hand we say that she should be sold, and on the or make her desperate enough to be sold, and on the other hand we say we want women to have rights. There's a hypocrisy there. भले ही वो गांव में पैसा देता हो, पर हमारी मर्जी नहीं है। अगर कोई हमारा बलात्कार करे पैसा देके, तो बलात्कार ही हुआ ना? Even if someone gives money to rape us, rape is still rape. This is commercial rape. सोचिए कि एक औरत के अगर दिन में हजारों बार और बलात्कार हो और सरकार का नजर नहीं जाता है उस उसको बलात्कार की नजर से नहीं देखता है धितकार है इसे सरकार पे जो हम औरतों को सोसन करने पे मजबूर करता है। She says that such a government needs to be cursed, which ignores the multiple rapes of a woman again and again and does not notice it। हम कहना चाहेंगे कि अगर हमारा समाज चाहे तो हमारी औरतें बिकना बंद हो जाएगा क्योंकि अगर हम सरकार से बदलाव क्योंकि सरकार अगर ये लागू कर दिया है कि हम औरतें भी को इसको औरतें बोल रहा है कि अपनी मर्जी से हो रहा है इसको लागू कर दिया जाए सरकारी कर दिया जाए तो कोई ऐसे घर नहीं बचेगा जहां औरत नहीं बिकेगा खुले आम औरतों को बेचना शुरू हो जाएगा तो हम आप सबसे आग्रह करते हैं कि इन लड़ाई में सब हमारी साथ दीजिए और जो औरतें बिक रही हैं उन्हें बचाने में और जो आने वाली पीढ़ी है जो हो सकता है भविष्य में सारी की सारी औरतें बिकने पर मजबूर हो जाए उन सारी औरतों को बचाने में मदद करिए और सरकार को इस फैसले में सोचने के लिए मजबूर करें हम लोग कि वो अपने फैसले बदल दें इसको सरकारी नहीं हमें इंसाफ चाहिए शी इज़ एंडिंग बाई सेंग दैट शी वॉन्ट्स जस्टिस द गवर्नमेंट इन इंडिया इज द न्यू गवर्नमेंट इन इंडिया इज प्रपोजिंग द लीगलाइजेशन ऑफ प्रॉस्टिट्यूशन एंड इफ प्रॉस्टिट्यूशन इज लीगलाइज दैन गर्ल्स इन एवरी हाउस विल बी सोल्ड स्पेशली फ्रॉम हर कम्युनिटी फ्रॉम पुअर फीमेल लो कास्ट फैमिलीज एंड शी सेज दैट शी वॉन्ट्स ऑल ऑफ यू इन दिस रूम to uh, write to our government, uh, to enter into dialogue with our government, to tell them that this will end protections for all poor uh, low caste women in India if prostitution is legalized in India. And it will, justice will not just evade them in this generation, but in all the coming generations also. Mm -hmm. And now I would like to welcome Anna, who has joined us uh, from the European Network of Migrant Women. Anna is from Cyprus, and uh, she will talk about how um, women of color and undocumented workers and those suffering racism and how the, the interconnection between racism and prostitution and trafficking. Anna. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I apologize. Uh, I'm a bit late, so I, I missed some of my own <laughs> panel here. But I want to say that I'm incredibly happy to be here and very grateful, uh, both uh, on behalf of the network that I represent and uh, personally. And yes, I am uh, from Cyprus. I live in Cyprus, but I originally am from Russia, and the topic of sexual exploitation and prostitution is extremely personal to me. Um, and when I was preparing this presentation, I was thinking how to, uh, what, what to talk about. And of course, I can bring a lot of examples from the experience of our member organizations who work with survivors of trafficking, survivors of prostitution, sexual exploitation. Uh, I, I, can, I can make my, my speech quite colorful in terms of um, examples of uh, women, migrant women, their experiences in this industry in the European Union. But um, I'm going to structure my presentation slightly differently. Um, and since we're talking here about interconnection between racism and, and um, exploitation and prostitution, here's what I'd like to start with. This is a quote from Rosa Parks. And this is what she said. This is her bi from her biography. 
The slaves had to fool the white people into thinking that they were slaves, or that, that, that they were happy. Uh, I'm sorry. The white people would get angry if the slaves acted unhappy. They would also treat the slaves better if they thought the slaves liked the white people. When white people died, the, their slaves would have to pretend to be very sorry. The slaves would spit on their fingers and use it to wet their cheeks like it was tears. They'd do this right in front of their little slave children. And then the children would do the same thing in the presence of the grieving white people. I'm going to leave this quote uh, for a while. Um, and I'm going to tell you a couple of words of um, our network. Uh, we are present in um, 20 European countries. We're quite relatively young um, platform of migrant women-led organizations uh, with diverse membership from service providers who work with uh, women survivors of violence to uh, more analytical think tanks and um, policy-oriented uh, uh, institutions. Uh, we have also members who are the platforms, that means they represent a number of migrant women organizations uh, in some European countries. We are growing. Um, at the moment, uh, we have 20 members, and I think by the next year, we'll probably reach the number of 25. We all share very clearly the abolitionist position towards prostitution, and we all support uh, the approach towards eradication of prostitution by suppressing demand and criminalizing the buyer. Um, I, it has been only six months since I became the chair of this network. Uh, but there are some very important changes that took place in my life since then. And what I mean by that? Being the chair of, the, of an organization made of such diverse cultural, ethnic representation, and we have women coming from um, Latin America, from African countries, from Eastern European countries, from Asian countries, from uh, Arab backgrounds. So being the chair of such diverse platform, I was for the first time pushed to think in a very literal sense of the world in a radically intersectional way. And for those who know what intersectionalism means, um, they will un understand. Um, I was pushed to step down from my position of knowledge and assume the perspectives of different to me in cultural or ethnic sense women. Working for these women, I, in a way, have to become these women. And this has been a revelation in many ways. One of the revelations that uh, was in the understanding, and I'm not claiming I have the full grasp of it, of the word colonialism. I have been recently reading and watching lots of materials and analysis, specifically feminist analysis, on the history and effects of colonization. And apart from ob obvious historic facts that I had to learn, what it made me understand was how the process of colonization works, what means it uses, and what effects it achieves. And in understanding the process of colonization, I realized that I'm finally arriving to the point where I can get a real grasp of what prostitution is and how it really works. Personally speaking, for me as a Russian woman, the very concept of prostitution has always been, to put it mildly, problematic. I always did and still do find unthinkable for a country that uh, Russia that managed to produce in the beginning of the 20th century some of the most outstanding women liberation movements and theories that were, of course, consequently erased from the Russian historiography. Nowadays, the average Google search for Russian women identify nothing but beautiful Russian brides, the brand internationally promoted. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that to reconcile the images of docile, sexually commodified, and empowered by this commodification, Eastern European women, with the history, potentials, and culture of the women that I know and grew up with, has been causing me personally a 
cognitive dissonance for quite a while. And while I could never understand what exactly the famous brand Russian prostitute is supposed to mean, now, thanks to the amazing network of these amazing women, I'm capable finally to look at prostitution through the lens of colonization. And the word colonization came to mean for me much more than exploitation of global south or uh, slave trade. I now see very clearly how prostitution with its intrinsic mechanisms of stealing personal identity, oppressing psychological liberty, exploiting sexuality, disabling decision-making capacity and abusing vulnerability exemplifies the very worst and the very obvious of what colonization is. It is for this reason that I chose Rosa Parks' quote. It reflects so well from the position of the oppressed and disempowered how the oppression and disempowerment are internalized. And given the current debates around the prostitution, this is a very important question, how this internalized oppression is transferred from generation to generation and how on, at times it is defended. So I must say I'm extremely grateful to the European Network of Migrant Women for making me understand the universality of colonization within prostitution and how it feeds on the most vulnerable factors and the most disadvantaged circumstances. And what are those uh, factors of vulnerability? Um, this is pretty much what an average migrant woman would be able to tell you about her life. Migrant women are, of course, a very diverse group. And we know, um, but we know it at the same time that the most disadvantaged sectors of labor, as well as prostitution, I'm saying as well as prostitution because we do not consider it as labor, obviously, are overpopulated by migrant women in Europe. I won't go into, thank you, I won't go into the details of all vulnerable, financially difficult, legally precarious circumstances that make a life of thousands of migrant women so hard in Europe. I would like to assume that most people here understand this. What I'd like to say in relation to prostitution is that to find yourself in prostitution, and I'm not talking here about clear-cut cases when women are abducted and forced into slavery, it requires more than just being in a financial need. It requires something that Rosa Parks again calls giving up on your ambition. It is giving up on the idea, if you had such, of course, that as a woman, you deserve better. Better life, better treatment, better financial opportunities, better employment. And this is what vulnerability associated with migration and economic insecurity brings into lives of thousands of women who migrate in search of better life. Uh, and I'd like to tell you what our members think about prostitution. And I'm conveying here the position of 20 organizations, all of whom have a very clear view that prostitution is not and will never be a viable or even considerable employment opportunity for migrant women within the EU. Migrant women, just like any average European woman, just like any average woman on this planet would like to keep the sexual interactions with whomever she pleases outside of monetary transaction. If there is migrant women contribution to the European Union growth or overcoming crisis, and that's what's important at the moment, it is certainly not in sustaining high levels of sexual satisfactions of an average European male. What migrant women do need is access to citizenship, access to justice, qualification of recognitions, end of racial ethnic objectification, and end of real labor exploitation, and the end of outsourcing all the underpaid, precarious, and menial jobs to migrant women, the provision of real labor rights, <coughs> the end of sexual, physical, and economic violence. Um, and I'd like to finish my, my speech by 
giving you a quote of a uh, quite outstanding Russian feminist, Alexander Kalantai, whom probably many of you know. She was the first minister of uh, social affairs in the uh, newly formed Soviet Union. And this is from her speech that she made in 1921. Uh, the speech was for the third all-Russian conference of heads of the regional women's department, and it was called Prostitution and Ways of Fighting It. Now, majority of what she said in this speech actually is perfectly applicable to nowadays reality, and she even then was talking about criminalizing the, the buyer. But here is a little quote, and I will finish with this. Prostitution destroys the equality, solidarity, and comradeship of the two halves of the working class. A man who buys the favors of a woman does not see her as a comrade or as a person with equal rights. He sees the woman as dependent upon himself and as an unequal creature of a lower order who is of less, less worth. The contempt he has for the prostitute whose favors he has bought affects his attitude to all women. The further development of prostitution, instead of allowing for the growth of comradely feeling and solidarity, strengthens the inequality of the relationship between the sexes. Um, this was 1921. Uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, and I'm going to finish with this. Thank you, Anna, for sharing with us the experiences of migrant women and how universal it is affected by colonialism and also uh, reminding us of the history of women leaders who have been fighting this for so long and uh, what we can continue and how we can continue. I would like uh, Pierrette now, uh, who's the discussant, uh, to make comments. And after that, I'm going to ask each of our panelists to just say one sentence in response to everything that you've heard today, to each other, whatever the one last sentence that you would like to leave the audience with. So first, Pierrot, and then each of the panelists. Thank you. Thanks very much. And thanks a lot to CAP International for, the, for this invitation and for this very important uh, conference. So I'm supposed to discuss, so um, I have only three. <laughs> points to bring on the table, um, maybe to complete or to, to bring another um, perspective. Uh, I just wanted to mention first a, a, a figure. It's about the Romani woman, because uh, we're talking about the most vulnerable, and uh, at least in Europe, this community is um, very vulnerable. Um, we have a figure um, from uh, Switzerland in uh, Zurich. There is, um, amongst the, the persons in prostitution, 80% of them are from Hungary, which already shows about the links between trafficking and prostitution. But 98% of those Hungarian women are from the Romani community. Mm -hmm. So here, what I wanted to say is that um, on top of being uh, excluded and discriminated, they are also most vulnerable to, uh, to prostitution. Uh, if you go to Brussels, on the streets of Brussels, you would find women from um, um, Bulgaria, and they would be either Romani or they would be from the Turkish, the minority Turkish-speaking community of Bulgaria. The second point I wanted to make is about um, maybe another group that is um, very vulnerable. Um, it's the young women. Um, with the European Women's Lobby, we work a lot now on, on the issue of sexualization of girls. Mm -hmm. This is a phenomenon that uh, I'm sure you have seen everywhere. Um, I would like to mention, for example, the existence of a um, competition called Minimis in Belgium. Uh, maybe in other countries, it's everywhere. Um, another example, uh, you all know this um, music video clip of Miley Cyrus, uh, where she's completely naked on a raking ball. Um, this is something that we need to be aware of. It's the, por it's the increasing pornification of the public space. Um, the idea that this is how a young woman has to be if she wants to be visible, and this has to do with creating vulnerable women towards um, violence and prostitution. Today, sex education uh, is mainly on the internet. There is a clear lack of 
public policies to have uh, sexuality education at school. So, um, for example, our members in Bulgaria tell us that 45% of young people would discover what sexuality is through the internet. And, uh, and if you listen to some researchers on pornography, they would tell you that what they find on, on internet is not the softer pornography you could imagine, it's even harder. So um, there's a trivialization in our society of sexualization, of pornification, of prostitution. Um, and this is due to these uh, neoliberal ideas that um, it's everybody's choice to do whatever they want. And today, every action is supposed to be a choice. And we end up uh, with um, going backwards. In the 70s, the feminists were fighting for the personal to be political. Le personnel est politique. Today, I would say the personal is personal. Uh, it's every person's business, and we are completely losing the collective struggles and the collective oppressions. Um, um, just a sad thing that is happening this month, um, and this panel is linked to Beijing Plus 20, so the 20 years of the Beijing Platform for Action. Um, we have made uh, the report for the European Union, and every month, UN Women is doing a, uh, awareness raising on different topics. So this month, it's about violence against women because of the 25th of November, International Day to Combat Violence Against Women. And there was, uh, of course, Twitter and uh, any social media, a lot of facts and figures. And UN Women has um, disseminated uh, a figure to raise awareness. And this is what the figure says. 4.5 million persons on the planet are victims of forced sexual exploitation. So today, we can freely choose sexual exploitation because there is forced sexual exploitation. So can you believe that an agency, a UN agency that is supposed to represent women's organization, is using this very neoliberal concept of making us believe that we can consent to our exploitation the same way maybe we consent to poverty or maybe we consent to rape. So this is something I wanted to raise because this is impacting on how we structure ourselves, how the young people see the future. And my final point um, was about um, men. Um, so now we are speaking today, uh, at the same time in India, there is a big conference about um, uh, engaging men. Again, it's UN Women organizing. Um, <laughs> I've got a bit of a anger towards UN Women um, this month. So they organize a big congress um, to discuss how men can be involved in, um, in gender equality and violence against women. What I wanted to say with that is that we're talking about prostitution as an exploitation of the most vulnerable. But I also see um, prostitution as a system that benefits to the, the most powerful people. And I think we need to question this uh, inequality and put back the visibility, the responsibility to where it should be. How come we have those systems today that would allow some people to just benefit from their power? And then how come we don't address the real root causes of prostitution, that is gender inequality and the lack of women's rights? So that was my three points maybe to bring a broader perspective to, to this panel, but thank you so much because your voice is really the most important to make sure that people understand what's going on. Thank you, Pierrette. And now I will ask each of the panelists to may say one last comment that they would like to make to the audience. Anna, do you want to go first? Um, well, I think it's a very, very important strategic um, moment. Um, there is a debate about prostitution going on in many countries, and I think it's important to be um, kind of active and to, to be on top of this debate. And um, uh, we are, as, as a network, we're watching carefully all the developments on the legislative front, specifically what's happening in France at the moment, and we're really wishing good luck and hoping that the, the law is going to be passed and, and uh, the, we place the responsibility where it does belong. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Alors, tout d'abord, uh, un merci. Thank you very much. And Incroyable First of all, vous, I really uh, want to thank all of you as survivors. Uh, we often call them the warriors among native women because you really are warriors. So thank you for um, paving the way for the next generation. 
dans la salle à l'extérieur pour la pause, like à venir avec nous rendre hommage à toutes les femmes qui disparaissent, soit dans le trafic humain ou dans la traite des femmes au Canada. Human les trafficking, fa- women trafficking sont in Canada during the break. Ce phénomène. Native women are very. Il y a un phénomène depuis um, 2003 où on perd de une à sept jeunes filles. Are the victims au of this between one and seven young women in Canada. Le trafic humain ou la traite Most des femmes. Most people think Alors, vous that avez, their daughters disappear because, because of trafficking and prostitution. Ou des familles, des so we sometimes leur put poupée dolls pour dire without que faces. Really, chaque statistique really a une histoire, to un vécu. Mean to, to bring meaning to all the figures saying Alors, that uh, for each of these dolls there's a broken future, a broken daughter, and uh, you can uh, come and see everything we do in Canada for that. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to say that in every country, this country, this country, this country, which is our women, which is the society, we all want to change the laws of our laws. We want to change the laws of our laws. तो हम चाहते हैं कि अगर फ्रांस में भी अगर ये कानून बदलाव चाहते हैं तो उन औरतों को जो सबसे अधिक पिछड़ी वंचित है हर चीज़ों से वंचित है और कभी किसी के सामने आके बोल नहीं पाती है क्योंकि बहुत कम लोगों में ऐसा होता है जो किसी के सामने आके बोलती है पर वो लोग ऐसे हैं बोलना तो चाहता है पर अपनी दिल की बात जमा पे नहीं लाती और किसी के सामने बोल नहीं पाती आप लोग बस उसको देख के कानून बनाइएगा उसके लिए जरूरी है उसके लिए आई अपील टू एवरीबडी फ्रॉम विच एवर कंट्री यू आर टू रियलाइज दैट समबडी हु इज लाइक द नट कम्युनिटी देर इज अ नट वुमन और अ नट गर्ल इन एवरी कंट्री दैट्स वॉट शी इज रियलाइज टूडे एंड शी अपील्स टू फ्रांस टू मेक श्योर दैट वेन दे आर पासिंग द लॉ to remember their लास्ट वुमन एंड देर लास्ट गर्ल हु इज कम्प्लीटली निगलेक्टेड टू थिंक अबाउट हर वेन पासिंग द लॉ She wants to say one more thing, Greg. Why do we have time for one? Yes. कि जितनी हमारी नर जाति की बेटियों पे हमारी घुमंती जाति बेटियों पे हिंसा होती है शारीरिक हिंसा मानसिक हिंसा उनकी सपनों को मर जाना उनकी सपनों रोज मरता है वो अपने सपनों को रोज मरते हुए देखती है फिर भी उनको लोग बोलता है कि ये औरतें खुद अपना मर्जी से शारीरिक शोषण दे व्यापार करना चाहती कभी ये जुल्म मर्दों पर हो और फिर उनसे हम पूछें कि क्या आप अपनी मर्जी से करते हैं या तो कैसे उनसे कभी ये सवाल करें हम लोग क्योंकि हम अपने भारत में एक दिन हमारा जब मीटिंग चल रहा था तो वहाँ पुलिस वाले थे डीएम थे सब थे और वो वहाँ भी हमारी एसपी जो है ये सवाल किया था कि फातिमा जी बहुत सारी औरतें जो है बोलते हैं कि हम अपनी मर्जी से करते हैं हमने ये सवाल किया था और हम चाहते हैं कि जहाँ ये सवाल आए तो आप भी ये पूछिए कि उन मर्दों से कि जितनी भी जुल्म औरतों पे होता है वही जुल्म उस पर हो जाए और ना समाज उसका साथ दे ना कानून उसके लिए लागू हो और वो शारीरिक शोषण मानसिक शोषण सब उस पर जो हो तब उनसे पूछेंगे क्या आपकी मर्जी है Her last question is that uh, you know people keep telling women that this is your choice, uh, and she says every time that they are raped and they are uh, exploited and their dreams are crushed, it's not their choice. And so every time that she ha- she's asked this question by men who are the district magistrate or the local police officer. She says, if the same kind of exploitation was heaped upon men, uh, you know, exploitation after exploitation, every dream taken away, physical abuse, mental abuse, then would men say this is their choice? <laughs> <laughs>